Hi, this is Jason from Clipfolio. In this video, I'm going to walk you through how to filter data for a particular date range using two user input controls that will act as date pickers. This video will also cover concepts such as setting your time zone, input and output date formatting, Unix time, filtering dates using properties tab, and end of day values. We'll also be using variables for our date pickers, and we'll demonstrate how setting the scope of your user input control component will control how those variables affect your clip, dashboard, or all dashboards. For the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to use the sales booked sample data, which you can find in your trial account in case you want to follow along. So let's get started. The first thing I'm going to show you is how to set the default time zone for your account. This setting enables a consistent default time zone to be applied to all date and time functions and data formatted as date or time. To find the setting, click on the little arrow beside your name in the top right, click Account, and then choose Settings. And then in the left menu, choose General. And if you scroll down to the bottom, there should be a section called Set Time Zone. And if you click Edit, it'll allow you to scroll through the various time zones and choose the appropriate one. Alternatively, you can click on the Use Browser Time Zone setting, which will automatically take the time zone that your browser is set to. Next, we're going to build a simple table that's going to show revenue booked per day. And then we're going to show you how you can filter that to include a smaller subset of days. So we're going to start by going to Add a Clip. We're going to select Build a Custom Clip. And then we're going to go to our component palette on the right side and drag in the table component. As you can see at the bottom, it's asking us to add a data source. So we're going to go down there and click Add Data Source. And we're going to select Example Sales Booked. Next, if we click on column A, you'll see that the first column automatically populates with all of our dates. And you'll also notice that the first row is blank. So we're going to go to the Properties tab, and we're going to add a filter. And then we're going to deselect all the entries, select that blank row, click Exclude, and filter it out. Then we're going to adjust the sorting to be oldest to newest, because we want to start obviously with the oldest days first. I'm going to name the column header to be date. And then a little lower down in the properties, you can see we can change both the input format, so how the dates are coming in, as well as the display format, and how they're shown on the screen. And I know that our data actually has uh, two numbers for the month and two numbers for the day. So we're going to change that to show MM and DD. And then for display format, we could also just type in the format we want, um, custom, but we could also select from this dropdown and you'll see there's many different date formatting options to choose from. And I also want to highlight that uh, even though we have changed our default time zone and the default is to have these checked for both the input and the output, uh, you can deselect that if your data happened to come in in a different time zone, um, and you can choose which time zone that is from the dropdown, and you can do the same for the display format. But for the purposes of this example, we're going to leave it as is. So next we're going to go to column 2, and this column is going to show our revenue. So we're going to go to the Data tab, scroll over to column S, and select Revenue. And then we're going to go to the Properties tab. And we're going to change the column header to Read Revenue. And then we're going to change the formatting. We'll deselect Automatically Set Format. And we're going to select Currency. Next, we're going to add a Results row and select Sum so that it shows the total revenue for all of the dates that are shown at the bottom. And this will be super convenient once we add our date filtering because this results row will update automatically depending on how we filter those dates. So next we're going to delete the last two columns because we don't need them. And we're going to title our clip and we'll call it Revenue Booked Table. And before we go ahead and save this, I just want to show you how many dates we have in this data. It's, uh, it's a lot. And there is a way that we could filter these down by adding a new filter. 
you just go click edit filter switch over to conditions and you'll see there's a drop down here where we can select on or after and pick a date and we could add a second condition for on or before and we would pick the end date um, from the day picker so that would allow us to uh, filter based on just December and that gives us a lot more manageable number um, of dates However, this would be, um, if we do it this way, it would be hard-coded, um, which would force us to go back in and re-edit the clip each time if we want to see a new range of dates. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to delete these filters, and I'm going to show you a way that we can do this dynamically using two user input controls and variables. So we're going to go save our clip, uh, make sure it's named, click finished, and there's the clip on our dashboard. So now we're going to add the user input controls. Again, we're going to click add a clip, build a custom clip, and then over in the component palette, we're going to select user input control, and we're going to drag in two. The first one's going to be for our start date, and the second one will be for our end date. So I'm going to click the first one, and I'm just going to label it start date. And then I'm going to change the control type to be a date picker. And as you see when I do that, it gives me options for display format again. And it also gives us um, an output format um, dropdown, which is default to Unix time, which is what we want because when we're performing calculations uh, between dates, they need to be in Unix time. So we can leave this as is. Also note that you could change the default time zone again, um, but for this example, we're going to leave it as is. Next, we're going to add a variable, um, and since we don't have the variable created yet, we're going to just click here, new variable, and we're going to call this one date picker A, and we could enter a clip editor value here, but note that would only apply to while we're in the clip editor, and once we leave the editor, it wouldn't apply anymore. Also note there's a couple of options here. We can change the scope for this user input control. Uh, it's defaulting to use it only on this dashboard, which is what we want, but we could also choose to use it only on this clip, or we could use it to affect the scope of all dashboards. Under set value, there's also the option to choose to only change these values once you press a button. Otherwise, as soon as you click the date, your data would be updated instantly. So we're going to leave that uh, set to instantly. Next, we're going to change our end date user input control. We'll change the control label. We're going to once again change the control type to be a date picker. And then we're going to click use end of day value. Now since our output is Unix time, which is an exact number based on the uh, exact date and time in seconds, use end of day value ensures that you're going to be right at the end of the day, which effectively sets it to 11 59 59. And this is useful for us for our end date date picker, but you probably wouldn't want to select that option for your start date date picker. Next, we're going to create a new variable for our end date date picker. We're going to call it date picker B. And I'm going to once again keep the scope at only this dashboard. And finally, I'm going to title this clip date range. I'm going to click save, finished. And here's our updated dashboard. We have one clip that includes our date pickers and the other that includes our table. However, they're not quite connected yet. So we're going to go back to our table, click edit. And we're going to go to the properties on the date column. And we're going to add a filter like we did before for on and after. But we're going to click on this second icon here, which allows us to choose a variable. And we're going to choose date picker A, which corresponds to our start date input control. Then we're going to add a second condition. And this one's going to be on or before. And we're going to select the other variable, date picker B, which corresponds to our end date. So now once we save that and we go back, you'll see that it defaults to having no data in our table. And that's because there's nothing selected in our user input control. So once we pick a start date and an end date, you'll see 
that the table below is dynamically updated instantly. And you'll notice that the results row automatically updates as well. So the last thing we're going to do is we're going to add a third clip, a bar line chart. So we're going to go add a clip, build a custom clip, and then we're going to drag in the bar line chart component. Once again, we're going to have to add our data source, which is going to be the same. It's going to be sales booked. And we'll start by updating our x-axis, which is going to be our dates. You will then choose group repeating labels so that if there's any repeating values for those dates, um, they'll be combined together. Then we're going to sort. So those dates are going from oldest to newest. Once again, remember to double check uh, your formatting to make sure it's set the way you want it. I'm going to go for full date names here, which don't quite fit. So I'm going to adjust the label rows and the label angle to be auto, which will um, allow it to dynamically change depending on how big the clip is. Um, and you'll see it's going to change um, as we update that user input control when we're back on our dashboard. Then we're going to go over to our series and we're going to choose the revenue column. I'm going to format that revenue as currency. And I'm going to change the series label to read revenue booked. I'm going to give our clip a title, which will be revenue book chart. And then if we go back to our x-axis, which has our dates, much like the table, we can add a filter, switch over to conditions, and then choose an on or before date, an on or after date that corresponds to the start and end date from our user input controls. And since they're using the same variables, once we save this clip and go back to our dashboard, any changes we make to those start and end dates are going to simultaneously change both our table and our chart. I'm just going to reorganize this dashboard to have the date picker on the left and our visualizations on the right. And you'll see as I pick new start dates that both our chart is updating dynamically as well as all of the values that are in our table, which gives us two different ways of visualizing the data without having to select the date range in two different locations. So I know that was a lot of information, but we went over um, how to change your time zones, um, how to change time zones specifically in various components, uh, how to filter based on time and date, and how to build user input controls with date pickers to dynamically update uh, different clips in a dashboard. Thanks for joining me for this tutorial. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel because we'll be updating it regularly with new tips and tricks to enhance your dashboarding experience. You can find additional support resources in our help center at support.clipfolio.com. Thanks and have a great day.